ChatGPT just launched two brand new models, GPT 4.1 and GPT 4.1 Mini. And if you're like most people, you're overwhelmed with how many models they have out and you don't actually know when to use them. So in this video, I'm gonna walk you through their two brand new models, exactly when you should use them. And then we're gonna go through the rest of the models that they have so I can tell you which ones are gonna waste your time and when you should actually use certain ones. Okay, so here's how you actually access those new models. If we come over here, you're going to click on this. You're then going to click on more models. And now you're going to see GPT 4.1 and you're going to see GPT-41 Mini. Now, if we click into GPT-41, you could see we could still access all of these different tools right here. And if we click into GP14 Mini, you will see that we actually lose one of the tools. You're not able to use the Canvas feature with this, but in terms of actually using these two, GPT-41 is going to be amazing for anything that is going to be very logic-based. Think about doing coding or any type of analysis. And then GPT-41 Mini is going to be really fast for everyday tasks. Essentially what these do right here are replace O4 Mini and O4 Mini High. You're not going to want to use these as much anymore because GPT-41 and GPT-41 Mini are actually going to be better for these things. In fact, if we come over to Mini right here, we'll be able to see that we also have all access to all tools. And if we come into Mini High over here, we also have access to all tools. But again, GPT-41, GPT-41 Mini, think about coding, think about logic, think about doing things in that realm. Now, what changes with these two models is you have to completely change how you're actually prompting these things. And ChatGPT release a GPT-41 prompting guide, but what I wanted to do was actually break this out for you because if we scroll through this, you could see that this is incredibly long here. I do not think that you have the time nor the energy to waste going through this, so I broke it out into 13 simple things. The first one is you need to be hyper literal. GPT-4 is way more precise than any of the older versions, so you need to say exactly what you want. If there are key prompts, you need to repeat them in the beginning and at the end of long requests and it helps if you just stay on track. In addition to that, I would use clear separators like markdown headers or XML tags. I would avoid things like JSON because it breaks on long text. In addition to that, you want to force this thing to go into thinking mode. If you do not tell it to think step by step, it isn't going to do that. And if you simply do this, it's going to boost the accuracy of your results like crazy. In addition to that, you want to tell it to go into agent mode. This is beast mode for GPT-4.1. You want to give it reminders, like don't stop until the task is 100% done, use tools, don't guess, and plan every step before action. These three things are going to unlock agent mode, and then as a result, you are going to get way better answers from GPT-4.1. In addition to that, the context window on this is 1 million tokens. You want to make sure that you're trying to use the whole thing, but if you go past it, the quality is going to drop. In addition to that, you want to mix the base knowledge with custom context or tell it to use only one. And again, you want to be hyper specific. So as we could see here with like the first six of these, they're all be very specific be very clear because the more clear, more specific, the more that you can keep this thing on the road, the better it's going to be. You want to compare GPT-41 to a Ferrari. If you can keep the Ferrari on the road, it is a great car to drive. But if you can't keep it on the road, probably going to end up somewhere you don't want to be. Also, structure matters. When you're prompting this, give the role and goal. Give the instructions, give the reasoning steps, give the output format, give examples, and that is going to give you a better response. In addition to that, you need to help it find information. For example, tell it to scan documents and filter for relevant parts before you tell it to do things. Avoid weird patterns. Basically, you just want to avoid confusing this thing. Again, you need to think about this. This thing is hyper, hyper intelligent. And I'm sure that you probably know somebody like this in your life. They're incredibly smart, but they don't know how to tie their own shoes. Or they're incredibly smart, but they might break a glass if they try to wash it or something like that. This is exactly like that. You need, just need to be hyper specific. Hey, this is what I want you to do. This is what I want you to focus on. And the results are going to be amazing. In addition to that, if you correct with one clean line and clear fixes, it gives you better results. You should use code frameworks. For example, these things right here. And reminder that GPT-4 is not a logic machine. It's not going to think unless you tell it to. It excels at logic, but it's not going to actually use that superpower unless 
you give it a reason to. Now, before I get into all the other models that they have, I need you to smash that subscribe button if you wanna stay up to date on the latest and greatest AI tools. I upload videos like this every single day and you're not gonna to wanna to miss them. In addition to that, if you're feeling overwhelmed with how quick AI is moving, you don't actually understand how you can make money with AI or automate your work with AI agents, well, I strongly suggest that you check out the pinned comment below because I just started AI automation school that is literally going to tell you exactly what AI tools you should use for your specific situation. It'll teach you how to build AI agents that can automate your work without knowing how to code and so much more. In fact, it's the only way to get one-on-one -on -one personal feedback from me on exactly what tools you should be using for your specific situation. So I'd strongly suggest that you check it out. Okay, so let's go through all of the other models now. Now, like I was saying before, O4 Mini, O4 Mini High, quite frankly, these are useless now that you have 4.1 because 4.1 and 4.1 Mini are going to completely replace these things. And quite frankly, they just do a better job. So what are we left with? We are left with GPT-4.5, we are left with O3, and we are left with GPT-4.0. Now, O3 right here is incredible. In fact, I think this is one of the most powerful models because this is the thinking model. If you need to plan something out, if you want to go back and forth and you don't want to give it very clear instructions on exactly what to do, this is the model that you are going to use. In fact, I want to show off a use case for this. I have showed this before when they first launched this, but I think that this is a great reminder for everybody about just how insane O3 actually is. So if we go through and we search my chats right here, I'm going to type in 6308. And what we're going to see is how intelligent this thing actually is. So what I did here was I uploaded a picture of my old house that I sold uh, about a year ago now. So I said, where is the location of this? I give it no other context. All I say is where is the location of this? I give it an image. This went through for six minutes and did not stop until it literally found the address of this house. And we could see exactly how it thought through each step of this process. Now I want you to think about this. What this did was it analyzed images, it manipulated images, it went and searched the web, it then thought with itself and reasoned. It then kept going, kept analyzing images even further, kept searching the web even further, kept thinking with itself even further, and after six minutes, this was literally able to find out the exact address of this house by looking at the color of the brick looking at the style of the house, looking at the landscaping, and then matching that with a photo on Zillow. I want you to think about how crazy that is, because what this means is that this is fully capable of searching, of thinking, of continuing to do things, and actually anticipating what question you are going to be asking in the future. And that's why O3 right here is amazing for planning. You could upload to this different searches. You could upload to this different CSV files. You could upload to this PDFs and different data. You can give this all of the information for your business, for your life, for anything, and get this to actually do the planning phase. And then the way that I would think about this is I would use O3 for planning across everything when you're using ChatGPT. If you're doing something with code, you're then going to want to use GPT-41 to actually execute on that code. If you were doing something with writing or something with more ideas, you're going to want to use GPT 4.5. And this actually brings me into GPT 4.5. This model right here is amazing at writing. It sounds way more like a human than any of these other models. And it also allows you to explore different ideas. Essentially, GPT 4.5 has a creativity turned up on it. So it is going to be good at writing and doing things like that. But you might also find that it hallucinates a little bit more than these other models. Now, this leaves us with GPT-40 right here, which is great for most tasks. Now, personally, I don't really use GPT-4.0 that much. Again, if I had to walk through this, GPT-41 for coding, for logic, for analyzation, but you need to be super, super specific on exactly what you tell it to do. GPT-4.5, amazing for writing, amazing for ideas, O4 Mini, O4 Mini High. I would stop using these right now and I would ignore them because they're just not that good anymore. GPT 4.1 is basically going to take those over. O3, absolutely amazing for planning. And then GPT 4.0, again, I don't really use that as much anymore. The only time that I really ever find myself using this is if I come into a ChatGPT project and I want to create a script 
for something super specific, or a lot of times I actually use GPT 4.5 for this also. So you're gonna to wanna to make sure that this is how you're using ChatGPT, because if not, you're probably using the wrong models for the wrong times, and that's why you're not getting the results that you want. In addition to that, if you haven't done this, I would strongly, strongly suggest that you do this. There's two things, actually. First and foremost, you should create specific projects for the different tasks that you are trying to accomplish with ChatGPT, again, I write my YouTube scripts with this. So I gave it specific instructions about exactly how I want it to write, the tone, the topics, certain things like that. Like I want it to be in a 10 to 12 minute long video. And then if we come into project files right here, I actually uploaded all of my YouTube scripts so it understands what that output actually looks like and understands what I want it to go ahead and do. But in addition to that, top right hand corner right here, if we come over here into Customize ChatGPT, you also want to make sure that you fill all of this out. Now, I just blanked all of this out for the sake of this, but you wanna make sure that you have all of these capabilities in here. You wanna make sure that it knows your interests, your values, your preferences. You wanna make sure that you give it certain traits that you would wanna see in an advisor or in a friend or whatever role you're using ChatGPT for. You wanna tell it what you do and you wanna give it a nickname if you want it to be something funny. But in addition to that, one other thing that I did wanna call out because one of my next videos that I'm gonna be dropping is probably gonna be on this. If you come into settings and you come into connected apps, you will now be able to connect a bunch of different apps here and MCP is coming to ChatGPT. In fact, in the next few days, if not the next few weeks, I think we're going to see this drop because Gemini is about to, in just a few days, in five days, have a massive conference where they're going to release a bunch of stuff at the beginning of next week. And I think we're going to see OpenAI drop a bunch of stuff immediately after because that tends to be how things go in AI land. Now, if you like this video, you're gonna love this video right here that walks you through three hidden features that you could turn on with Gemini right now to get 10X the output. I'll see you over there.